This is Physics, Chapter 1, Physical Quantities and Measurements. Lesson 7, Measuring Length with Micrometers. Now, in this video, although the title says it's measuring length with micrometers, what I'm, trying, what I'm trying to do is to help you learn how to read from a micrometer. Okay, so let's have a look at a micrometer. This is how a typical micrometer looks like. And there are a few parts over here which you need to be familiar with. All right. Now, when, the, when we want to measure the length of an object, the object that we want to measure is placed between this anvil and the spindle. The anvil is fixed and uh, the spindle can be moved to the left or to the right by turning the ratchet. Okay. Right. So once we have clamped the object between the anvil and the spindle, some readings will be shown on the sleeve and as well as the thimble. Okay. Now let's recall as well, uh, a micrometer is best used to measure lengths in the range of 0 to 30 millimeters. And take note as well, recall that a micrometer is specially designed to measure lengths in the unit millimeters, not centimeters. And a micrometer as well, it is accurate to 0 0.01 millimeters. This simply means that the measurements that we take from here is to be expressed in two decimal place of a millimeter. So some examples of reading that we have is 13.43 millimeters. Or we can ex uh, express it in terms of centimeter by simply recalling that 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeters. And therefore, by dividing this by 10, we can have the measurements expressed in the unit centimeters. Now I'd like to bring your attention to two special parts of the micrometer. These parts will allow us to read the micrometer correctly. Okay, the first part is actually known as the sleeve. And on the sleeve, you see some markings with some numbers here. The sleeve itself contains what we call the main scale of the micrometer. Now, on the thimble, which is to the right-hand side, you see some other markings over here. These markings change when the ratchet is turned. These markings will give us what we call the thimble scale. The last part which I'd like to bring your attention to is this particular line on the main scale. Okay, this line has a special name and it is known as the datum line. Okay, so remember these three parts, the sleeve and the main scale, thimble and the thimble scale, and the datum line which is along the center of the sleeve. Now, in this particular slide, we will have a look at how we can actually read from a micrometer. So this area of the micrometer has been zoomed in, okay, to give us this magnified view. And this object has been placed between the end view and the spindle. Right, this object is actually a wire, and the length that we want to measure is actually the diameter of this wire. Okay, now the diameter of this wire stretches from the edge of the end view and spreads all the way to the spindle itself. And this distance is similar to the distance that stretches from the zero marking on the sleeve itself and all across the main scale to the edge of the thimble. Okay, so how do we first read this? Well, if you to look at this distance that stretches from a zero marking to this point, we can say that, hey, this object is of a certain length, which is longer than 8.5 millimeters, isn't it? How do I know that's 8.5 millimeters? It's very simple. Look at this. This is 5 millimeter marking followed by 6, 7, and 8. Those lines which are at the bottom represents half a millimeter. So if this is 8 millimeters, this will therefore tell us that it is at least 8.5 millimeters long. Okay. Now this 8.5 millimeters long that we read from the sleeve is known as the mean scale reading. So we write it down in this way, 8.5 zero millimeters. Remember that micrometer measures to two decimal places. So therefore, we actually put down 8.50 rather than just simply 8.5 millimeters. Okay, so now what happens to the balance of the length that has not been read yet? The balance of this length can be found by looking at the thimble and also this line known as the datum line. This balance of the length is found by looking for a mark on the thimble that meets the datum line on the sleeve. For this particular example, the mark happens to be the number 40 marking. So this number 40, 
to give us the what we call the thimble scale, we simply divide whatever the values or the markings that we find on this uh, thimble by 100. So 40 divided by 100, that will give us 0 0.40 millimeters. And finally, therefore, the reading itself, the reading here refers to the length or diameter of the wire. This is found by simply taking the main scale and the thimble scale and sum them up together. And that will give us 8.90 millimeter long. So let's have some practice here. Okay. Now for this particular micrometer, if you to look at the sleeve, the sleeve will be able to give us the main scale reading. So let's have a look. If this is a zero marking on the main scale, this will therefore be one and two millimeters long. So it is at least two millimeter long. So we write this down as 2.00 millimeters. So how about the how about the thimble scale? Again, we look for marking on the thimble that meets the datum line. So this marking that meets the datum line happens with the 46, 47, 48, and the 49th mark. So what do we write down for the thimble scale? Recall that we what we do over here on the thimble is simply taking 49, the marking itself, and dividing that by a hundred. And that should give us 0 0.49 millimeters. So the length of the object that we are measure we are measuring should read as 2.49 millimeters when we sum both of these up. Right, for the next one, let's have a look at the main scale reading on the sleeve. The main scale reading should read as 2.5 millimeters. And how about the thimble scale? Take note that it is a 23rd marking and therefore the thimble scale should read as 0 0.23 millimeters. So therefore, the, the length of the object that we are reading should be 2.73 millimeters. Right, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you.